Hello, welcome to Rando Tech Info. So today we're going to be putting this year's latest and greatest from Samsung, the S23 Ultra, against their latest and greatest from last year, the S22 Ultra, to see if Samsung has made any year-over-year -year improvements to their shutter and capture speeds. And if you're wondering where the S22 Ultra is right now, it's actually right there recording this video because I use my phones to record our videos because we're not made of money. And this is not the first time we have addressed the much talked about shutter lag issue on Samsung's phones. In the past, we have tested a fix for the shutter speed of the S22 Ultra, the shutter adjustment features found in the Samsung's Camera Assistant app, and put the shutter speeds of the S22 Ultra up against the Pixel 6 Pro. So if any of those videos sound like they are of any interest to you, I will leave links to those videos down in the description. And if this kind of hard-hitting tech content is your kind of thing, you might want to consider giving this video a like and subbing to the channel. That's actually a good idea. It's not bad. Yeah. Now, depending on how into the weeds you are willing to get with these types of things, the term shutter speed can mean different things to different people. For the sake of the testing you will see in this video, shutter speed will mean how quickly the phone is able to capture an image after the shutter button is pressed. And we will also be paying attention to the quality of those images with the intention of ultimately trying to figure out which phone can take the faster and cleaner shot of a moving subject. And to do this, we will be putting both phones through three different tests. The first will be a rapid shutter speed test to see how many images each phone can capture in a short span of time. A burst test, if you will. And we will do this with all four of the rear-facing cameras, which, for the unfamiliar, will consist of a primary wide sensor, a 0.6 ultra-wide sensor, a 3x telephoto sensor, and a 10x telephoto sensor. And we will do this in both normal and low-light conditions. The second two tests will consist of trying to capture a moving subject, the first being my car, and the second being an analog metronome. And once again, both of these tests will be performed with all rear-facing cameras. Now, one of the things I like best about Samsung's camera software is their inclusion of raw and pro modes, which allow you to manually adjust things like the exposure, white balance, and yes, shutter speed of the phone's cameras. But in the real world, when trying to quickly grab a shot of a moving subject, you won't always have the time to make those adjustments. So for this test, we will just be using the default point and click camera mode on both phones. That's fair. And finally, both the S22 and S23 Ultra have the ability for you to go into the camera assistant in the settings menu and adjust the capture speed for either high quality, high speed, or balanced shots. And we will be running all of today's tests two times. One's prioritizing quality and the other prioritizing speed. Everybody got that? All right, enough talk. Let's test. Sure enough, a few days later. All right, the results are in. Let's start with the rapid shutter speed test. And in this test, as in previous rapid shutter tests we have done on this channel, the shutter button on both phones was pressed simultaneously 10 times in quick succession. And performing the test indoors in low light, both phones pulled between three and five shots with each lens and it didn't seem to matter which capture speed setting was used. Performing the test outdoors with the higher quality capture speed setting, the S23 performed noticeably better than the S22, with the S23 almost handing in perfect results. However, with the capture speed setting set to prioritize speed, the S22 closed the gap and provided very similar and also close to perfect results. And performing the test again indoors in good light, we see a similar result with the S23 outperforming the S22 with the higher quality capture speed setting turned on, but again, almost completely closing the gap when using the prioritized speed setting. It should also be noted that regardless of which capture setting was used, there was no real noticeable change in picture quality on either phone. So with the default prioritized quality setting turned to on, the S23 did outperform the S22 in good lighting conditions. But when switched over to the prioritized speed setting, both phones performed about the same and both phones performed well. Moving on to our first moving subject, test, we attempted to capture Wanda by hitting the shutter simultaneously on both cameras as she broke the plane of the crosswalk at a speed of 25 miles per hour. And like in the previous test, we tried to do this with all four rear-facing cameras on both phones with both shutter speed settings. Admittedly, this is not the easiest thing to pull off and you would have to assume some margin of error. However, I think we can still draw some general conclusions from the results. In the first shot, using the primary lens with prioritized quality turned on, capture speeds are almost identical although I do think the S23 shot is slightly cleaner. Using the same lens with the prioritized speed setting, results are again similar, and the faster shutter speed setting didn't seem to make much of a difference. And these results are basically the same with the ultra-wide lens and the three times telephoto lens, with no real difference in capture speed or picture quality with either phone. And again, the shutter speed setting's not having much impact. With the 10 times telephoto lens with the prioritized quality setting, the capture speed was once again within margin of error, but the S23 definitely had a cleaner shot. And we see the same result when we switch over to the prioritized speed setting. 
And while picture quality is very similar with both settings, in this particular test with this particular lens, the faster shutter speed did seem to help in grabbing a slightly quicker capture with both phones. For our third and final test, we went with a... For our third and final test, we went with a less exciting... For our third and final test, we went with a less exciting... but more controlled environment. <laughs> Setting our metronome to a pokey 50 beats per minute with prioritized quality turned on, we see capture speed and blur using the primary lens on both phones is similar. And with the faster shutter setting, we see practically the same result with both speed and picture quality. And just as a frame of reference, since this is a test we have never done before, we also decided to run it with the Pixel 7 Pro. And those results were also nearly identical. Finally, we decided to ramp up the speed and run the test again. Surely this will provide us with some different results, right? The faster tempo of the metronome definitely made it harder to capture the shot, but once again the capture speed and image quality on both ultras was similar, and once again changing the shutter speed didn't seem to have much effect. And while the images were pretty blurry, they were no worse than the images captured by the Pixel 7 Pro. However, to be fair, you would probably expect a blurry image at these speeds from just about any phone camera, even in good lighting. So is the S23 Ultra an improvement over last year's 22 Ultra in the shutter lag department? I would say yes. A little bit. Sometimes, but not much. Most tests were too close to call and in the rapid shutter test where the S23 had its biggest advantage, that advantage was basically neutralized by turning on the faster shutter speed setting. And since turning that setting on doesn't really seem to impact picture quality, if you have an S22 Ultra, I recommend just leaving that setting always turned on. Interestingly, the shutter speed settings didn't really seem to make any difference when using the S23 Ultra. The S23 was also sometimes able to grab a cleaner shot during some of the moving subject tests, but I don't think that difference is probably enough to justify an upgrade. And finally, during the metronome test, both of Sammy's phones were able to hang with the Pixel 7 Pro, which is a promising result and I think speaks well to the improvements Samsung has made with this issue and will hopefully continue to make moving forward. Well, that's all the excitement I can stand for one day. Do you think Samsung has finally gotten a handle on its shutter lag issues, or do you think they still have some work to do? Feel free to share your thoughts down in the comments. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. And until next time, this is Rando Tech Info, signing out.